Hello there, my name is Mr. Smart Donkey. Welcome to another campaign on the Total War Warhammer. This time, I will be playing the Eye for an Eye campaign. I got access, uh, well, one day early. Hopefully, I'll be able to get this video up today as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, one day early. Pretty sweet. <laughs> I know a lot of uh, YouTubers like uh, Lionheart and Legend of Total War, etc. They got it like a week ago. But Anyway, I'm excited because it's a new faction and this game really needs something new. And I'm excited to play this little small campaign as well, because it shouldn't take as long as all the other ones, because it's on a much smaller scale. Um, although it is also, like, even though it's a smaller, like, piece of land, there's more to do on that piece of land than there is in the Grand Campaign. But anyway, let's jump into it. So, uh, let's have a quick look through all these things. Uh, so, the Beastmen are a Horde faction, if you are in a war yet. I'm sure you all are very much aware, but anyway. Um, so horde armies in close proximity will not suffer from infighting, which is different from the chaos faction. I haven't, I still haven't played chaos. The only faction I haven't actually um, played yet on the campaign. I have also not finished my vampire counts legendary campaign yet, but I finished all the other ones. Uh, best view of rage penalties for any di positive diplomacy conducted. I have no idea what any of that means, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Horde, the faction has no settlement, infrastructure, or military improvements are linked to each individual beastman horde. Corruption, chaos corruption can be spread in enemy territory, leading to public order problems and even chaos rebellions. This is really good for co-op as well. Um, there's a good chance me and Devin are going to be doing a chaos and beastman co-op, because they're the only real factions that can work properly together. Well, the, not the only real factions, the only real horde factions now that you can pro work properly together. Because with the Legendary Lord uh, mod, you can of course do co-op with uh, the same faction stuff, but Chaos doesn't have that. You can't do two players playing as Chaos. But now, with Beastmen, it opens up another slot for a similar style faction. Our top units are the Saigor, which is a specialist artillery. This thing is really cool. It's like a, uh, a, a living artillery, basically. He just throws rocks at enemies at a pretty ridiculous range, by the way. Uh, but it is only one of them, so it's similar to like the Luminarch of Heish, for example. It's just like one guy rather than four. Um, we got the Razor Gore Herd, which is like a... It's, it's a buffed up... Dire Wolf unit basically, like it's much stronger than Dire Wolves. And then we got Minotaurs, there's three varieties of these, I believe there's a shield and a great axe or great weapon variety of the Minotaur as well. It's pretty cool. Uh, Confederation options allowing other beastmen tribes to be merged with Kazakhs war herd via, di via diplomacy. I wonder if this is in the regular game as well, or in, like the Grand Campaign. That might be, that could be cool if there's tons of other herds in, like, in the campaign now if you start a new campaign. Aggressive units are also a variety of beasts and monsters. Yeah, they're very much like uh, greenskins, where their units are all... Or their range units are shit. They rely on monsters. Well, greenskins don't rely too much on monsters. Um, but they have very strong monsters and stuff. And their infantry is like, eh. Um, until you get to the late game, which is similar to the Black Orcs, which are really good. Strong diplomatic penalties of almost all factions. Yeah, we're similar to Chaos. Everyone hates us, and we cannot trade. Similar to Chaos as well as greenskins, I guess. Anyway... Um, so this is the mini campaign, so we only get one lord. In the main campaign, there's another lord as well. Uh, Malagor, whatever his name is. So this is Kazark the One-Eye, he's a faction leader, he's a powerful melee fighter and leader. He can unlock a ferocious Razor Gore chariot mount, which sounds pretty cool. He has plus 10% income from raiding, uh, plus 5 leadership versus humans. We're gonna be playing on legendary difficulty, of course. And he gets additional starting units of Minotaurs, which is a pretty good, decent late game unit. And one Centigore, which is like a calf, but I believe they're not. They're like the weakest calf, but their weakest calf is still pretty okay. Uh, anyway, there's a description, I don't really care about that, so let's jump into the game, I guess. Actually, uh, yeah, that's all fine. Cool, let's do it. Oh, 
Yeah, they seem like a nice bunch. Seem like a friendly, friendly group of people there. Well, I guess they're not people, they're beast men. So I guess there's no, um, since this is like a small mini campaign, I'm not sure how it works on the main campaign, but there's no like advisor guy cutscene like there is of every other faction in this game. That advisor being the most like unreliable person since he just jumps in ship with whoever is present at that time. But uh, not in this campaign. So this campaign essentially evolves around Kazrak. Who wants to take an eye back, I guess. From Boris Todbringer. Sorry, this guy keeps interrupting me. This is unbelievable. Alright, I think we get it, buddy. You're uh, you're still pretty pissed off that he got he took your eye. I suppose I'd be pretty pissed off as well. Alright, do we got to play today or we're just gonna watch this? There we go. Alright. Our objective there are yet those who have not le uh, yet learned Kazark's name. The blood ground cause, any answers. Destroy Karaburk. Oh, we got 2,500 favor. We got six grand to start off with. Making a little bit of money already as well. You can bugger off. Alright, so let's have a look around the map and stuff. Actually, why don't we just do this real quick? So, let's see. Where the f are we? Um, right, so you can see that like, this is not the full map, essentially. I don't even know where the hell we are. Um, I mean, I can see Hawkland right there. I think we're like... Um, Right, hold on. Is there anything? I, I think I recognized like a town up here somewhere. Like it said, Minenland or whatever. Man, I'm complete. I'm confused as to how, how this like where this is exactly. Karaburg. I haven't played for a few weeks. So I've completely forgotten where everything is. Karaburg is definitely a town that we've seen before, though. Okay, hold on. Where is this map? Not. Oh, that's why. Um. Okay. Yeah. I'm just. I can't quite recognize where we are yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out at some point. Anyway. Um. So let's have a look at all of our stuff. Let's have a look at our army first. So we've got Kazrak, of course. They have the same sort of system as um, Greenskins. Once you get above this bestial rage thing, you get um, more stuff. You get an extra army, which an AI army which follows you around. We are always in the Beastman ambush stance, which is cool. So we have a chance of ambushing enemy enemy armies. This is like our standard stance, which is pretty interesting. There's a raiding stance, similar to Greenskins as well. We got winded and stuff. Uh, in the encampment, which makes us immune to attrition, and we are hidden until discovered. Can't move though, and we replenish and stuff. Um, and the beast path thing, which is essentially like going underground, like, well, not underground, but yeah, it's similar to the other stance from the green skins and the dwarves. Um, so we'll look at our objectives. So our ultimate campaign victory means we have to kill these four factions. We have to have two factions join our confederation. So we need to definitely pay attention to that, because if we want to get this, we have to do that. And if we, like, destroy the entire world and this isn't possible anymore, we might miss out on that. We need 20,000 from raiding, and we need to ensure the top, poorest top bring is in a wounded state. Alright. So it's essentially murder everyone. Alright. Technology. So the way technology works with this faction... I haven't played anything, by the way, uh, yet of this faction at all. I literally just started the game and started recording immediately, but I've seen some videos that CA released. So... Every time you unlock a new um, thing, uh, research technology thing, the research rate goes down by 5%, but you can up it again by pouring money, 5 grand, 10 grand, 15 grand, 20, 25, and the research rate goes up by 20% again, and Chaos Corruption goes up as well, so a little bonus on top of that. Um, so you definitely want to do that, because 
five percent. Four of these things is already twenty percent. So then, like that, one of these only cancels out four different things, essentially four different technologies. So anyway, leadership versus humans. This might be good because we have really shit leadership, and we'll probably be fighting humans mostly in this campaign, I imagine. Uh, Gorn Ungor units melee attack for lords and embedded heroes and income from raiding. Evasion chance leadership. Equipment cost. Eh. Eh. Cost five grand as well. Doesn't actually. Re oh, this doesn't reduce the uh, um, the research rate at all, though. Uh, horde growth or recruitment capacity. Unit experience. Blah blah. That's all pretty pointless. Missile damage. That's pointless. Melee attack's pretty good. Weapon strength's good. Speed is good. Speed is really good actually, because we're probably gonna go mostly melee. I don't know if I'll bother much of range units. Maybe in the beginning. Um. Less attrition, raising casualties, and more casualty replenishment rate. That's pretty good right there, to be honest. I could go for that right away. Um, let's see. I think we're going to go for that first, and then I might go for the casualty replenishment rate. Because I think the, this is pretty important. Although, to be fair, these things are all pretty crap. Work growth's alright. could go for that. Alright. Um, I could also pump 5k in there right away, but I think we probably need our money for the moment. Uh, where are we? There we are. Alright, so we're not trading with anyone, our income's pretty crap. I should have a look at our town, I guess. So I think this is the same as the Great Chaos, where you don't make any money from any buildings. Like, there's no money making buildings, I think. It got upkeep production, that's pretty important. Probably want to focus on that. Looks like everything just takes one turn to make. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, so currently we can't make anything except for a den, which allows us to recruit Chaos Warhounds, which is pretty decent. Uh, Chaos Warhounds of Poison, Chaos Spawn. I want to see, can we, like, make a new army right away? Um, I just won't even do that, Crude Lord. This costs two growth, of which we have... Oh. Of which we have five, or a population surplus. Okay, yeah, it's definitely worth it, making another army right away, I guess. Uh, plus one. One recruitment for brave shamans. So this is oh this is Malagor. This is the other guy. He's another legendary lord. We can recruit him right away. That's pretty good. I might just do that. Oh man, this guy's pretty good as well. Though. Beast lord, beast lord, legendary lord. All right, I like this guy. The blood feed is really good, but and this one's really good as well actually. But I'm gonna go for Malagor because you know it's Malagor. And let's recruit like only shit units in here essentially. Okay, so he starts with a dugout as well, and this ancient thing. Alright, so we can't upgrade, or we can't build this anymore because it takes four population surplus. Okay, everything else after that takes one, two, three. Actually, this takes four as well. I guess a new building takes one, or, four, or like four, and then it takes an upgrade takes one, two, three, etc. Yeah, looks like that's the way it goes. Alright. So we won't be able to make those um, Chaos Warrants for a while. We can upgrade this, which gives us uh, recruitment capacity. Actually, no, it doesn't go up. Chaos Corruption, Chaos uh, Award Growth goes up though. Yeah, alright, that sounds good. I think I can still go into my normal stance, right? And just ignore. Like, we can just set it up to build, but we can't actually build it right away, right? Um, what have we got? We got some gore herds. So these guys are pretty expensive. Holy shit, 175. They're like not my standard. I mean, yeah, these guys are my standard units, 75. Yeah, that makes a little more sense. We got some Ungor Raiders, which are actually fairly expensive for how crap they are. They do 17 damage, which is like far worse than any other ranged unit in the game. Um, any other, like, non-armor-piercing range unit, and 110 range, which is horrible as well. And they're not even good in melee or anything, so, you know, I might just get rid of these guys immediately. Start recruiting some of these guys. I'm gonna recruit two. But I guess we can recruit those in here as well, when we're in encamp stance. Wait. Oh, I guess we just can't move right away, because we just made him. Alright. Well. Um. I wanna keep... Wait. Why are you, uh... Oh, right, because we're recruiting. Good point. Let's go back into this stance. We'll kill, kill some people first. Don't know which way I want to go first, but I guess I'll go down here. What have we got for a garrison here? Five units, and Scheinfeld is their main town, which also has uh, no walls. Well, it has walls standard, doesn't it? Um, I'll go for Al Alosh first. Ashol, Ash even. Alright, let's get over there. It's kind of odd as well. I kind of want to fight it just to see our new units in action. You know what? Fuck it. Let's do that. I want to see some of these cool new units. I mean, to be honest, like... It's... I'm not quite sure how to explain that. 
it's really weird how when before Warhammer was released, I was really looking forward to the var variation in units because, of course, every faction is different, and like rather than Romans fighting barbarians, you know, they're still humans. But in this game, everyone is a different like race, but the differences are pretty small. Like this, I mean, it's still all about the stats and. Like, just because someone isn't a human, but an orc, doesn't mean that their stats are any different. Like, they're still really similar units. I've got a ton of Vanguard deployment. Like, I could just set up half my army in front of them if I wanted to, but I don't. Um, right, so I'm going to actually have this up for a little bit, because I don't know much about the stats yet. We haven't got anything special on you yet. So the Gore Herd are, like... They're not late game infantry, but they're, like, halfway. Their armor's only 15, but they're much better than these Ungor Horde Spearmen. And compare them with these guys are bonus versus calf. Um, uh, they're not shielded, nor are these guys. Ungor hurt. These guys are shielded. Okay, so you have one shielded unit. I guess. Yeah, this unit looks a decent bit better. Alright, anyway. Um, and then we got the Minotaurs, which are pretty sick. I should actually have a look at all these units. Let's grab one of each. And him. Alright. Oh, he uses a whip. I saw that in the video. It's pretty sweet. And a massive cleaver weapon as well, which is pretty cool. Alright, so this is the Gore Herd. This is the Ungor Herd, I think. Yes. This is the spear unit, the shit one that we were about to recruit and then cancelled. This is the bow unit, which is exactly the same unit except for the bow. This is the calf unit, Centigors, I believe they're called. And then our freaking Minotaurs. Man, these guys are beasts. Look at them. Holy shit. Yeah, they definitely look pretty damn sweet. Alright. Cool. Now that we got that over with, let's uh, set up some stuff. That looks perfect. Oh, these guys are really... Is that normal? I feel like it's... Nah, it seems fine, actually. Alright. Uh, they had no range units today, so actually I'm going to put you guys up front. Just start firing at them for a while. Um, Centigors. These guys are melee as well. Okay. And I'll put you guys on the left side. General. Alright, sounds good. Let's get moving, lads. Let's triple speed this. Run up there for a little bit. Looks like... Yeah, it's pretty even, actually. I'm excited. Like, even though, like I was saying, the stats are pretty similar. Like, it really isn't much of a difference. It still should be cool. To have like a different and like a completely new faction, you know, we haven't seen anything new for a while. I'm still waiting for Bretonia to be honest. I'm looking, really looking forward to playing Bretonia in the campaign, but for some reason, CA is like, nah, we're gonna wait for ages before that's gonna happen. All right, are they gonna run towards me or are they gonna let me shoot at them? They are gonna come towards me. All right, spearmen, swordsmen, they have three spearmen. Yeah, all the spearmen on the flanks, which is unfortunate. All right. Let's get these guys in front. Wow, those like Gore Herd units are really spread out. Oh man, those shorts are getting fucked up there. I think our units have pretty decent charge bonus, so I actually should have properly charged in there, but eh, what are you gonna do about it? Alright, let's get some decent charges here. Get fucked, son! Pull them out immediately. Alright, I'm gonna send these guys towards the center here. Wait till these are all out of there. Get another charge in. I do love some good old charges. They, these guys are a pretty decent charge bonus, 42. Like, they're really fast. They have low armor and stuff. But because they're speed, it's pretty good. Should have pulled these guys out towards the side, so that it doesn't really matter. I don't really have any good targets, and that's it. Alright. That's not bad. Probably got a decent amount of kills on those charges there. I'm actually quite interested to see if they did much. No, they only got 8 kills. Oh, that's pretty disappointing. The Minotaur's got 45. They're only in there for a few seconds. That's pretty impressive. Looking forward to using that unit. I actually haven't even looked at their upkeep yet, nor the Senta Gorse. I was told by Legend who just started this campaign... Today or yesterday, he told me. I think it was today. Um, Legend of the War guys. That he actually lost his Minotaurs in a battle and it made his campaign easier because they're so damn expensive. So that's. 
I usually don't play that way. Like, I know he would get rid of it, like, on purpose. I like to keep it just because, you know, it's a Minotaur. It's awesome. Um, so it might be less effective, but, yeah. I'm not going to purposely get rid of it. So this is another feature that's different for the, uh, the Beastman compared to the Chaos, which is really, really good. So we can either raise in the file, which gives us a whole bunch of Horde Growth and Chaos Corruption. Um, or we can loot and raise, and this is different because you don't have to loot or raise. You can loot and raise, so you can do it all in one turn, which is what you were able to do in Attila as well. Although you have to do two, for, two different things, but you could do it in the same turn. In with the chaos in this game, you can't. You have to. You can loot them, but then you can't do anything. You can't raise them to the ground at the same turn. You have to wait until the next turn, which is really unfortunate. Uh, either way, I feel like 770 points or um, money doesn't really do much for us right now. I think chaos corruption could be pretty useful getting that early on, and some horde growth as well. A tiny bit of money isn't going to do much for us. Let's see the level ups. I haven't actually looked at this at all yet. So there's the mount, the one mount we get, the razor gourd chariot. Oh, that sounds like it's going to be sweet. Um. This is all pretty similar, I'd imagine. Yeah, Shadow Eyes is the 10% missile resistance. Weapon strength for the Lord's army. That's really fucking sick. Oh my god, plus 20%. That's crazy. That is really cra That's That's insane. 20% for the entire army. Um, this is campaign moon range. Yep, raiding upkeep. Ooh, this could be. This might actually be necessary for a legendary campaign. Well, not necessary, but really useful, I imagine. Attrition. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Wound recovery. Chaos Corruption, don't care too much about that. No, I'd just go for this. I think I will go for that, because that is really good. Charge, Vigor Loss, Melee Attack. This is the, the one that you need as well. Eh, only Charge, no Melee Defense. I guess because they're really offensive armies, you want to go full on the attack. Charge and Melee Attack, yeah. I want to get both of these. I don't know about this one. Ungor. I don't know if I'd be using Ungor units enough. Only, only Charge anyway, so it's not really that great. And then the standard stuff... RSI, this one probably useful. Melee attack from monsters, beasts probably. Ammunition, Saigor. Eh, I don't know if I don't know if I, this would be worth going for, unless I wanted to have like free Saigors, which I find unlikely. And then that's it, thing, and then all the melee stuff. All right, cool. So definitely gonna go for this, and I think I might even go for that right away, even though that early game isn't as useful. Our upkeep's already pretty crap. Actually, there's no uh, forced march or anything. All right, so now. We can't move anymore. And this is going up pretty rapidly already as well. Ah, so we can't actually... We can't change the stance anymore, so we can't actually recruit anything right now. Hmm. Probably still worth it, but... Not sure. Alright, I think that's all we can do, really. Which means we're also not building this building, which is unfortunate. Well, we have to just wait a turn, let him catch up as well, start recruiting some stuff. We can recruit a whole bunch of those 70... Oh, there's an army pretty close to us. In that town, hmm. Um, Alright, so I can't attack them this turn, but he can't. So let's move him over here. Unless I want to avoid, avoid Dunkle builds. No, I probably want to kill them as fast as possible. They are in Force March stance, but I imagine that their garrison is uh, 5 units. Oh, they got great swords in there. Okay, never mind. I don't think I want to take those on yet. I imagine it doesn't matter. Hold on. How much does it take to go into uh, Hidden Encampment? What is it? What's the stance that you go into once you start recruiting? Hold on. Hidden encampment stance. Yeah, I thought so. All right. So that takes twenty-five percent to go into that. Oh, I'm in it now. Yes. Okay. Right. Why don't we just move over here-ish? You go into normal stance. Move over here as well. All right. And then we'll start recruiting some shit. We're not going to go for too many range units. Alright, and yeah, we can't afford any, we don't have any population surplus. Growth, 19 turns until we get more. That's not very good. 11 turns. Man, I thought we had like an, oh, I guess we had a bonus last turn, so that's not a whole lot then. That's unfortunate. Um, haven't actually looked at diplomacy at all. Cult of Ulrich all the way over there somehow. And then there's Karaburg, which we're actually fairly on par with strength-wise. Interesting. Well, we're about to recruit a whole bunch of units. They can't recruit that many units, so we should be able to take them next turn. They're in Force March stance. Oh man, that's not a whole lot of factions. I didn't even notice that. Alright. So that's gave us more growth, more chaos corruption. Not a whole lot, to be honest. 
Okay, so I think I want to attack them this turn before they start recruiting. They're not recruiting yet, so maybe I give it one more turn. Yeah, I should do that. Give it one more turn and get our armies up a little bit further. We can afford... Can't actually afford that many units. I should get rid of the range units now. Uh, I should get rid of them after the battle. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to go down to minus income after this turn, but... We'll sack this place instead or something. We need to we need to attack and then get rid of the range units. Having two range units is kind of pointless anyway. Alright, so next turn we attack. That's going to be a pretty fun battle. Minus 68. Alright, we can handle that. Ooh, the ruinous powers take grim pleasure in your endeavors. In their dark mirth, they grant a boon. Which of their gifts will you choose? Have you ever recruited a Kazrak or a Bray Shaman? So our Gorbel is the melee guy. And a Bray Shaman is... One of the magic dudes, and I believe one of the magic guys has the ability to summon a Psy... Psy... Gore? Whatever the hell it's called. Which is pretty awesome. I think if I got this guy, I'd probably use him for... Uh, well, I'd use him for combat this turn, I guess, if I could use him. But otherwise, I'd use him as an agent, whereas this guy I use as an actual unit. Either way, my income's going to go down a lot from whichever one I get. Um, I'm honestly I'm more excited about the Gorbu, but I think again it's just like a guy that looks cool, but he doesn't do much more than a regular like captain or something. So I'm gonna go for the Bray Shaman. Who I think gets really awesome stuff. Spawns a Manticore. Okay, a Manticore. Well, that's almost as good. I think um, what's his face? This guy gets the ability to summon one as well. A uh, yeah, Saigor, yes. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Can you move right away? You can, actually. Alright, we'll pop you in an army then. So rank comes down to 318 now. We're gonna go murder these people. They actually have some range units in there. Uh, yes, Beastman Ambush. Pop the agent in there as well in a sec. Alright, so they've got one great sword, two swordsmen, a spearman, two crossbowmen. The general, Jovi Helborg. And five extra units, alright. Shouldn't be too bad with our extra army as well and our new Breeze Shaman, which probably can't really do much yet. Actually, what can you do? What can you do? I guess this. That's not bad. Um, He's got plus three melee attack. Okay, that's fine for a guy like him. Pop him in there. You guys move on over. I should have thought about perhaps besieging with them if I wanted to recruit in the other army, but it doesn't really matter right now, I don't think. That's not actually that much better than it was just now. I guess because of these Ungor Spearmen Herd are pretty shit. Their leadership's also reduced somehow by something. Not sure what. I guess the enemy's doing something. But let's fight this battle this episode as well. I guess the great swords are the biggest issue here. But I don't know. They've got a, uh, a little hill. Is this the same map as we fought on just now? Might be. Not sure. No. No, I don't think so. It looks similar, but it's not. So they've got... Um, yeah, we've got a lot more men, but... It is legendary difficulty, after all. I could use my Minotaurs on their great swords, I guess. Yeah, that's probably a decent trade-off. I imagine my guys would be a little bit better. Armor-piercing. No bonus or anything. I'm not going to gamble. I'll take that. That's pretty good. Okay, so our reinforcements coming from behind us. Is it the same? No, it's not the same map, is it? No, I don't think so. Right. I'm glad I didn't get rid of these two units yet, by the way. Um, so I'll pop you in the middle. These two around. What are the strongest units in the center? They're, they're so different, though, because they're so like wide formation-wise. It's odd. Um, two range units. You know what? I'm going to put you guys on the flanks. With the hopes uh, hope of going around and starting to fire in the back of them. Alright, so here's a wizard. I feel like the bull would have been better in this particular fight this early on, but for now this, this will have to do. Um, Centigors, pop you on the flank. And Minotaurs, right, you're over here. You know what, guy, okay, hide you in the forest. You probably can't hide now, because you're too big. Well, that's alright. Okay, and they're sitting on the hill. They actually have a ranged advantage just because their crosswomen are better. But that's okay. Right. Let's uh, run everyone up. Uh, actually, that's the wrong one. You? So what have you got? 
The Vile Tide. Strong versus multiple combatants. Costs 6 Magicka. Or Winds of Magic, sorry. Uh, large Explosion Area. Alright. The Overcast. Increased Armor Piercing Damage Extended Range. Missed Gas Chance 50%. Alright. Uh, what have you got for your... Uh, out of the fact area. Well, that's pretty good. How is it normally? One unit. Okay, so I can get a bunch more units. Right. Um, so you guys are going to go... Well, I need to actually properly set them up if I do that. Ugh, God, I always hate this. Alright. Let's do it manually like this then. Sorry if you hear screaming in the background. My nieces are over. Shouldn't be too loud for you guys though, I don't think. Alright. Uh, Centagors, run over there. You guys, run over here. Generals, let's keep them somewhat apart from each other. Right, so that's everyone moving. Let's triple speed this shit. Um, what's the range on your spell? 200 meters. Alright. I might want to try and cast this first. I'm not sure if it's useful doing the overcharge. Armor piercing isn't particularly useful against these lower armor units yet, so. See, so yeah, I gotta I gotta get in there. I gotta get in there fast because they have a um pretty well, not big range advantage, but yeah, they've got the heal as well as a slight range advantage. The units are generally better, more range and oh, no they're not coming up yet are they? More range and um, more armor as well for that matter uh, but also more damage, they're just generally better everything they do is better than my units alright you guys can run for a bit, because it can't be bothered where's our greatsword unit actually? Uh, it's in the forest. I don't know. I can't remember if it's got a, a different image. I think it does. Yeah, it's probably over here somewhere. Well, at least I got the right unit for the job over there then. Centagoras. Let's run you guys over here. I might want to try and see if I can scare off their crossbowmen with these guys. Alright, everyone's in position. Let's start moving up. Not too close. I don't want to get into a range yet. We gotta like get around the edges before we do that. I think like, I'm gonna lose this the battle pretty hard on the infantry front. Oh crap. Let's run out of there for a sec. I lost one guy on this unit. Unbelievable. Unless he'd already lost the man. Okay, well we sort of lured him off, so I guess that's alright. Start sprinting in there. I'm gonna actually immediately tell you to attack there. Get him around the back. General, right, I want you to cast your thing. Right. Sure, right there. Let's try that out. See how it works anyway. Alright, that did something. Alright, boys. Let's charge in. Actually, try and flank around these units a little bit more. You guys, come over here. Still don't know where is. Uh, oh crap, you're a bit far away, don't you think? All right, there, crossbowmen. You, hello. There we go. All right, let's get some buffs going. I think the double buff might be useful here. That's a pretty good spell right there. I'll pop one of these right there. All right, cavalry. Let's actually get in there. Minotaurs. Eh, I don't want to even use my Minotaurs for that. You guys chase them off. You got in there. We should be winning that. Oh shit, the range unit sort of walked in there. That's not particularly useful. You are actually alright there. Victory's in our grasp. Oh, this sh battle seemed like it was going to be difficult, but I guess it's going alright. You should be winning the fight against their general, I imagine. It's only this... That's not going too well, actually. Minotaurs, you might want to help out over there. You need to fire in there. Cavalry, since you caught them, get in here. We already lost one unit there. Uh, you. No, I want your spell. Oh shit, he's getting fucked. Oh my god, look at his HP. 
You, kill this man for me. Okay, where's my calf? You're in there. Swordsman are wavering. They look pretty broken to me. Okay. Uh, you, get in there. You try and get over here, so help out or something. You're chasing off those range units? Yeah, keep doing that. It's fine. Okay, you need to get out of there. You need to kill our general and then we're good to go. But I think we're good to go regardless. If we can get a charge in there, that'd be good. Perhaps break them off. Alright, there we go. That was pretty good, actually. Didn't lose much at all. It's the units in the middle. That's about it. Uh, they're in the town, so we can end it. Yeah, that was pretty good. I mean, the battle meter was pretty even. It was slightly in my favor, but that was alright, I say. Yeah, the units in the center, but that's what they were over there for, I suppose. I don't know, I feel like these guys might be a little bit too high value. Maybe I should put them on the flanks instead. Yeah, perhaps that's the better idea. I never really actually found out where these guys were. I just sort of attacked whatever. But that worked out in the end. The uh, Okay, the Centagores here getting 102 kills, 72 on the Minotaurs. 29 on him, even though I'd focused the general. This guy took a fuck ton of damage though from the enemy general. He just focused on him all of a sudden, and he just went down. Like, every hit took about a massive chunk. But it worked out. Got it. Ooh, nice. That's a little bit of money. And we can perhaps sack this. Or raise it. Um, yeah, I think I'll take a little bit more money right now. Make sure we, we start getting some decent money and then we're good to go. Alright. So you can't do anything anymore. We've also almost got enough for this. We're going to be on... We're going to be at 78. I think we need 80 for it. So that's unfortunate. Going to level up on him as well. So I think I am going to go for this. I think that's just, like, that's really important. The 15% of keep reduction. That's already, caught, like, saving us about 100 bucks or so. You can still recruit, so why don't we do that? Let's recruit some more of them. And I think I'll keep the range unit. They're not very good, though, are they? But they add a little bit of depth in the army. Maybe I will keep them for now. I'll probably get rid of them at some point, but for the moment, it's okay. Alright, so next time, I think we're going to head over to towards here and start finishing off these towns. Like, we want to go off the coast, essentially, not just go straight inland. That's probably a bad idea. We are... Are we allied to these people? What the hell? No, we're not. It just looks blue because it's not. Better, but it's not even. It looks blue because it's not. Um, right. Yeah, that gives us a massive advantage over these people. Oh, I can't actually go into diplomacy with them. Alright. That's alright. Wait, what is our... Um, our objective was to kill this faction. Okay. Alright, let's end the turn. I love how fast the turn's going. This is crazy. Cool. I am going to leave this first episode here, though. So that was awesome. I'm actually really looking forward to playing more of this. That this, These units are fun to play with around so far. Again, they're essentially the same as everyone else, but still. Ooh, this will allow us to recruit Ungor Herd and Ungor Spearman Herd with shields. That's probably useful. These guys are... Also shield. Yeah, they're like the main infantry for the beginning, I think, rather than these spears I've been recruiting so far. So yeah, probably good to make that, but we'll figure it out next time. Until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and goodbye.